Hello, Robin here at Toadstool Tarot. I thought I would do um, respond to uh, a hashtag by Anna Astral Lady Tarot called Cliche Tarot Reader. These are, I guess, sort of stereotypes or cliches um, thought about the nature or habits of tarot readers and see if any of them apply to you. You might want to get a pen and paper to jot down the questions so you can respond as well. Number one is, um, do you have more than one version of a deck? I have numerous versions of the RWS deck. My current favorite traditional one is the, it's on makeplayingcards.com. Here's the, the number, the RWS RL20B2. I know that's not a great name for it, but that's what it's called. It's got a orange roses and lilies back, beautiful kind of antique -y coloring and detail. I also have the um, Conrad Stain Pam's Old deck. You can sort of see the difference here in the coloring between the two. He's taken out the bright uh, yellow and blue and gray backgrounds in the cards and antiqued them. I also have the uh, Pamela Coleman Smith's Rider Weight Playing Card deck, which has a little version of it, kind of antique -y. and many more. <laughs> I have a, a, a lot of RWS uh, decks. They're all slightly different. And um, I like different things about each one of them. Number two, do you have backup decks? I do have a couple of backup decks. Um, this is actually, this was one of my favorite RWS decks. It's the RWS 2.0. And I got a backup of this deck because it's at makeplayingcards.com. I don't know how long it will be available, it's sort of independently produced. And I liked it so much if my single copy of it got damaged, I thought I should have one, a backup just in case. I only have one backup of that. Also a recent favorite is the Tarot of All Ages. Now, I have a backup of this by accident. I ordered this on Amazon. It didn't show up for a couple of weeks. It should have showed up overnight. So I reported it missing. I got a refund. Actually, I didn't get a refund, a replacement. They sent me another copy. The second copy showed up right away, and about a week or two later, the original copy showed up. So I was going to send the original one back, but knowing how they usually do things at Amazon, it would probably end up in landfill somewhere. They don't resell them. So I thought, well, that's sort of a waste. I'll just keep it. Now I have a backup. So I have two copies of my favorite deck, my current favorite. I think those are the only ones I have duplicates of or backups of. Oh, no, that's not true. Um, my own decks. I've created several decks, and I have um, at least one or two backups of each of those because one never knows how long MakePlayingCards.com will remain in existence. And uh, the decks are made to order, so um, they could just disappear entirely and my decks would be 
lost to history. So uh, I have a couple of copies of each of those just in case, you know. Um, I do use my own decks and um, they're special to me and I just would like to have at least one backup for each one in case they get damaged or destroyed. So yeah, I do have a few backup decks. Now I probably have a hundred tarot decks in my collection, about round about that, and I don't have backups of others in the collection. So mostly I, I would tend to want to get a backup of something that's independently produced rather than mass produced. Um, that you know may go out of print or may become unavailable if I'm particularly attached to that deck. Or if it's mass produced and there's word that it is going out of print. But uh, I don't think I have any anything in that situation. That's a long way of answering number two. Number three, do you have tarot tattoos? I don't. I do have what I consider spiritual tattoos. They're on my arms, upper arms, where they're out of sight. They're only for me. They're not really to share with other people. It's sort of like sigils on your body kind of a thing. They're very special to me. They have significance, um, symbolic importance to me and me only. Um, when I got my first tattoo, I realized, I had this realization that a tattoo is like a scar that one chooses. It's with you for life. And it is a scar because they cut the skin to let the ink in via needles and um, but it remains there visually for your life so it, it's a scar for life a scar that one chooses number four tea are you you know do you are you a tea drinker as a tarot reader I am, not exclusively, but I do like tea. I, I like several different teas. My favorite, my personal favorite, is violet black tea. And there is something about the preparation of tea and the way that tea is infused into the water and how you take breathe in the aroma of the tea and the taste of the tea and it sort of slows down your world to sort of prepare tea for consumption and um, I think that sort of plays into the whole idea of meditation contemplation card reading slowing your world down a little bit Number five, crystals. Do you collect or have crystals? I do have quite a few. Here's a couple little ones. Um, there's a black obsidian hand palm stone that it's, is meant for scrying. I have yet to be able to scry with it. There's a rose quartz palm stone. It's a little soda light. It's not black. It's actually really, really dark blue. I love the soda light. I have uh, amethyst, quartz crystals, uh, amazonite, um, citrine, uh, a number of crystals. I won't show them all here, but at some point I might do a crystal share. Number six, books about tarot. I probably have maybe ten to a dozen books about tarot. Some of those are books that came with decks. Some of them were purchased separately. Some are quite um, lengthy and involved. Some are easier to read. Some I have as ebooks. Number seven, do you keep a tarot journal? I do, but mine is a very tiny one. 
and um, I just make a few little notes. Sometimes when I get a new deck, I'll pull a spread and make observations about the cards. Sometimes I'll make little notes about notions that come to me about the nature of tarot, card reading, symbolism, so forth. Number eight, do you love to shuffle? Not particularly. I think this is a thing most tarot uh, readers love to shuffle, whether it be riffle or overhand. I don't riffle shuffle, I overhand shuffle, and I'm not that keen on it. It's a necessity to mix the deck, but I'm not, it's not a thing I'm really feel one way or the other about, I guess. Number nine, fairy lights. Do you have fairy lights? I actually have a string, well I guess they're fairy lights, they're like Christmas lights, you know, that blink and twinkle white. I guess it's fairy lights. I have some that I strung around my apartment years ago. I haven't actually plugged them in or used them in years. They're just sort of like strung around the walls and the ceiling gathering dust, but they do have a nice effect when they are turned on and there's like a speed control to have them twinkling at different rates. I don't think it has any bearing particularly on tarot reading, but there you go. Candles. Do you um, keep burn candles? I like candles. I don't keep a lot of candles. I have some tea candles. I very rarely use any of them. I'm extremely paranoid about burning my place down. An unwatched flame is an extreme hazard as far as I'm concerned. And I can't really enjoy a candle if I'm sitting, you know, focused on it completely to the exclusion of everything else unless I'm meditating on the flame. So usually if I burn a candle, it'll be one candle at a time. I'll put it on some sort of a safety platform where it's not going to fall or ignite anything else by accident. I'll keep a close watch on it and um, when I'm done with it, I'll extinguish it. I don't nap or go to sleep with candles burning in my apartment. Number 11, tarot reading space. Do you have a designated tarot reading space? I have a really tiny apartment. I don't have a proper table reading space area. I do have a number of these sort of lap trays, these little wooden trays. And I use this as my designated reading space. I just sort of hold it on my lap and put my card spreads out on that. Works fine. Um, I am studying Lenormand at the moment, and I think it might be problematic for a grand tableau because they're not, none of them are very large. So, yeah, that could be a problem. Kind of limits my spreads to um, three card, five card spreads generally. I think I could get as much as a nine card spread on these trays, but that's about it. I think I, ha I actually might have done a couple of Celtic crosses, but it, that's not a spread I generally use much. I think that is the, the number of questions that Anna posed in her cliche tarot reader. I added a few extras. Number 12, incense. Do you burn incense? Um, I do like incense. I don't burn it very often. I do like the atmosphere it gives off. Um, I like watching the smoke, and I think the smoke vapor trails are very meditative to watch. It's sort of helpful if you're contemplating cards, card gazing, uh, just meditating in general. 
I think my current favorites are probably sage, uh, palo santo, sandalwood. Number 13, altar. Do you have an altar in your home? I have an altar space shelf that is so crowded and cluttered I don't use it anymore. I have what I basically call a pocket altar, little, little brocade purse that I keep things like crystals and little special objects in it. There's a hagstone in here. Um, brings me to number 14, gods and goddesses. In my little altar, I have a little Minoan snake goddess. And some people do have figures, figurines around their apartment of little gods and goddesses. Lastly, number 15, um, do you have a cat or some other familiar? I don't own a cat. At one time I did have a cat decades ago. I have had dogs. I've had, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person. I currently don't have any pets anymore. Um, I think that probably covers the cliche tarot reader, all the cliches about tarot readers. So which of these applies to you and which ones don't? Maybe share your thoughts, your responses to these 15 prompts. Thanks for joining me today. Bye. Till next time.